Everyone has been enjoying these recruiting rankings over the last few days, so I figured we'd talk about some wide receivers. When looking through recruiting rankings, there's no question that wide receivers have been the biggest hits and misses. Today, we're going to be taking a look back at the top 10 wide receiver recruits from the 2012 class. We're going to be using 24-7 rankings for this list. But before we get to the top 10, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications so you never miss another video. About 85% of viewers who watch my videos aren't subscribed, so if you enjoy college football content like this, then this is definitely the place for you. Also, the 5th Annual Harris Highlights Award Show is this Tuesday night. It's the only college football award show that is decided entirely by the fans. There's about 20 different categories, including Best Quarterback, Best Running Back, Most Surprising Team, Most Disappointing Team, a lot of fun categories, and you guys can go vote. The link to vote is in the description below and you guys can vote as many times as you'd like. You can watch the award show live on my channel this Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. Starting the list at number 10 is Bryce Trex. He attended St. John Bosco High School in California. During his senior season, he caught 70 passes for 1,400 yards with 11 touchdowns. He opted to stay close to home as he committed to Cal. Overall, he had a very solid career in Berkeley. In his four seasons, he caught 195 passes for 2,500 yards and 15 touchdowns. He's one of the best receivers in Cal history as he's third all-time in program history in receptions, fourth in receiving yards, and ninth in receiving touchdowns. After a successful career in college, his NFL career never really panned out. He signed with the San Francisco 49ers as an undrafted free agent after the draft, but was waived before the season began. Then in October of 2017, he was signed by the Browns off the Eagles practice squad, but was waived in December. After he was waived, he was signed back to the Eagles practice squad. During his NFL career, he was able to see the field and catch some passes. He has eight career receptions for 160 yards. With his NFL career over, he's turned his career towards becoming an NFL agent. He recently went to Azusa Pacific University to get his master's degree in sports management. Number nine on this list is Duran Neal. During his senior season in high school, he got 35 passes for 800 yards with 15 touchdowns while rushing for 700 yards and 11 touchdowns. He was one of the best all-around players in the country and had some pretty good offers. During his freshman season at Oklahoma, he only caught five passes and only had 13 catches his sophomore season, but he found his groove the next two years as he got 86 passes for about 1,100 yards and six touchdowns. After his career with the Sooners, he went undrafted. He was signed to the practice squad by the Broncos, but was released. He gave the XFL a shot in 2020, but was cut when they trimmed the rosters down. Number eight on this list is Jermone Hopper. During his high school career at Philip O'Berry Academy, he had over 4,000 yards and 50 touchdowns. He committed to Clemson, but sat behind some pretty good wide receivers on the depth chart. After redshirting in 2012, he got 71 passes for 800 yards and six touchdowns over his next three years. After graduating from Clemson, he wanted to transfer and play his final year somewhere else and then enter the NFL Draft. He left Clemson, but never ended up at another school. He said that life steered him in a different direction, and instead, he took a part-time job at his godfather's barbershop as a receptionist. He moved back in with his mom and worked with a local trainer before and after shifts to stay in football shape, and needed to provide food not only for himself, but for his child every day. He tried making an NFL comeback, and his name was attached to the Texans and Panthers at one point, but he was unable to latch on and make a roster. Number 7 on our list is Caleb Jones. He attended Austin High School, where he was an All-American, 3-time All-State, 3-time All-Area, and 3-time All-District performer at wide receiver. In his senior season, he had 59 catches for over 1,000 yards with 9 touchdowns. He recorded 213 catches for 3,000 yards and 27 touchdowns during his high school career. He decided to stay close to home and committed to Texas. He only recorded two catches during his freshman season, so he opted to transfer the following year. He decided to transfer to Arizona, where he became one of the best receivers in the Pac-12. After sitting out the 2013 season, he was one of the best receivers in the conference in 2014. He caught 73 passes for 1,000 yards with 9 touchdowns. The following season, he got 56 passes for 900 yards with 5 touchdowns. He finished his Wildcats career with the 10th most receiving yards in school history, and was also tied for 10th in receptions and 12th in receiving touchdowns. Had he returned for a third year, he likely would have been near the top for all three. Jones signed with the Philadelphia Eagles as an undrafted free agent in 2016, but was waived during the final roster cuts. In December of 2016, the Vikings signed him to their practice squad, but he was later waived. The same thing happened again in 2017. Then in April of 2018, he was suspended for the first four games of the season after violating the league's policy on performance enhancing substances. He was waived on August 31st and was then suspended the first six weeks of the 2019 season for violating the league's policy on domestic violence stemming from an August 2018 arrest. He was reinstated from suspension in October of 2019, but hasn't joined the team since. Number six on this list is Chris Black, and there wasn't a whole lot of info I could find on him. 
He attended First Coast High School in Florida and was one of the top wide receiver recruits back in 2012. He caught 55 passes for 900 yards and 12 touchdowns as a senior while rushing for 200 yards. He went to Alabama where he sat behind some pretty good receivers, including one that's going to be on this list later on. He spent three seasons with the Tide, appearing in only 11 games. He got 25 passes for 290 yards and two touchdowns. Frustrated he wasn't seeing the field more, he opted to transfer and stay in the conference. He ended up in Missouri, but in one season with the Tigers, he only caught 17 passes for 257 yards and a touchdown. The last I was able to find on him, he signed with the Birmingham Iron in the AAF back in 2018, but that league has since folded. Before we get to the top five, if you could please take a second and give this video a thumbs up, I would greatly appreciate it. It really helps share the video with more college football fans, and it only takes a second to do. Speaking of Alabama wide receivers, Amari Cooper comes in at number five. He attended Miami Northwestern Senior High School. He was there at the same time as Teddy Bridgewater, who was recently in one of these top 10 videos. As a senior, Cooper had 33 catches for 700 yards and six touchdowns. He had offers from the best teams out there, but ultimately, he chose Alabama. As a freshman, Amari Cooper led the team with 59 catches for 1,000 yards and 11 touchdowns. The 11 touchdowns broke Alabama's 62-year-old record for the most in a season. His receptions and receiving yards also broke Julio Jones's Alabama freshman records. He earned consensus freshman All-American honors and was selected as an SEC All-Freshman team by the league's coaches. In his sophomore season, he had 45 catches for a team-high 736 yards with only four touchdowns. Then, as a junior, Cooper set a number of single-season and career records for Alabama. Against Tennessee, he broke Alabama's single-game receiving yards record with 224, which he then later matched later in the season. For the year, he had 124 catches for 1,700 yards and 16 touchdowns, both of which were school records. In addition, his 124 receptions were an SEC record. He became Alabama's all-time leader in receptions, receiving yards, and receiving touchdowns. He was a finalist for the Heisman Trophy, finishing in third place. He won the Blitnikoff Award that year and was an All-American by essentially every outlet. As expected, he declared for the 2015 NFL Draft and was selected by the Raiders with the fourth overall pick. He had a great rookie season as he became the first Raider rookie in franchise history with 1,000 receiving yards in a season, and the only receiver in the club to reach that same mark since Randy Moss. His five 100 plus yard receiving games and 72 receptions were also franchise rookie records. He had another great season the following year as he had 83 catches for 1,100 yards and five touchdowns, making his second consecutive Pro Bowl. During the middle of the 2018 season, Amari Cooper was traded to the Dallas Cowboys, but he picked things back up and looked like the Amari Cooper from his freshman year. He finished the season with 75 catches for a 1,000 yards and 7 touchdowns. His 2019 season was another good one as he finished with a career-high 79 catches with 1,200 yards and 8 touchdowns. Then, in 2020, he caught a career-high 92 catches for 1,100 yards and 5 touchdowns. Coming in at number 4 on this list is Deontay Greenberry. He became the first Scout.com 5-star player to ever commit to Houston. He caught 109 passes and produced state record totals of 2,100 yards and 33 touchdowns in 14 games at Washington Junior High School as a senior. He immediately produced for the Cougars as he was named to the Conference USA All-Freshman team. He led All-Freshman in the conference with 47 catches for 600 yards and 3 touchdowns. He was even better his sophomore year as he was named to the American Athletic Conference first team. He was the team's leading receiver on the year, catching 82 catches for 1,200 yards and 11 touchdowns. Then, during his junior season, he got 72 passes for 840 yards with 6 touchdowns. He ranks 9th all-time in Houston in receptions, 9th in receiving yards, and 9th in touchdown passes caught. So, I guess you could say he's the 9th best receiver in Houston history. He signed as an undrafted free agent with the Cowboys, but that was it for his NFL career. Before we get to the top 3, drop a comment down below and try to guess who the top 3 wide receiver recruits were in 2012. Number 3 is a tragic story as it was Thomas Johnson who committed to Texas A&M. He appeared in the first 10 games during his freshman season, catching 30 passes for 300 yards and a touchdown. However, in November of 2012, he went missing for two days before he was found safely. The reason for his disappearance is a mystery and no one really knows what happened during those two days. He wouldn't play another snap of football for his career though. Then, in 2019, he was sentenced to life in prison for the killing of a Dallas jogger who was hacked to death with a machete in 2015. Johnson's sentencing followed years of legal dispute over whether or not he was mentally competent to be tried. In 2016, a judge ruled that he was not fit to stand trial and had him committed to a psychiatric hospital, but the court reversed the decision following a report on his mental state from the hospital. On a lighter note, Stephon Diggs comes in at number two on this list. He attended Our Lady of Good Counsel High School in Montgomery County, Maryland. He recorded 800 receiving yards with 23 touchdowns as a junior and was runner-up for the Gatorade Maryland Player of the Year. Then, as a senior, he recorded 800 receiving yards with 8 touchdowns while totaling 300 rushing yards and 3 more touchdowns on the ground. 
He also played defense, recording 31 tackles with 5.5 tackles for loss and a sack. Diggs had offers from the top programs in the country, but opted to stay close to home and commit to Maryland. His career with the Terps got off to a great start. In his freshman season, he ranked second in the ACC and eighth nationally with 172 all-purpose yards per game. His 1,900 all-purpose yards were the second most in a single season in school history. He led the team in receptions, receiving yards, and touchdowns. Although his sophomore season ended early because of an injury, he was still an honorable mention All-ACC selection by the media and coaches. He got 34 passes for 600 yards and three touchdowns. Then, his junior year, he missed three games, but still earned second-team All-Big Ten honors from the coaches and was named an honorable mention All-Big Ten honoree by the media. He led the team in receptions, receiving yards, and receiving touchdowns. Instead of returning for his senior season, Diggs entered the NFL Draft. He was selected by the Vikings in the fifth round of the 2015 draft. Through his first five seasons in Minnesota, he was a great receiver. He never quite got to the level the Vikings expected him to, but he was still one of the better receivers for a five-year stretch. Then, in 2020, they traded him to the Buffalo Bills, where he turned himself into arguably one of the three best receivers in the league. He set career highs in catches and receiving yards, and led the NFL in both categories. Coming in at number one on this list is Doriel Green Beckham. As a senior at Hillcrest High School, he had 119 receptions for 2,200 yards and 24 touchdowns. He became the nation's all-time high school receiving yards leader, which has since been broken. Green Beckham was the consensus number one wide receiver recruit, and near the top of being the top overall recruit in the nation. He had offers from every everywhere, but chose to stay close to home and commit to Missouri. He appeared in the first five games of the season, catching five passes for 125 yards, but then came an arrest and suspension due to drug possession, causing him to miss a few games. He then returned to close out the season. He finished his freshman year with 28 catches for 400 yards and a team-best five receiving touchdowns. In his sophomore season, he had 59 catches for 900 yards and 12 touchdowns. However, that would be the end of his days at Missouri. On April 11th of 2014, he was dismissed from the program due to legal troubles. After his dismissal from Missouri, he transferred to Oklahoma. Per NCAA transfer rules, he was required to sit out for the entire year. He attempted to post a waiver request in order to make him eligible to play for the year, but the NCAA denied it. In January of 2015, he announced that he'd be entering the 2015 NFL Draft. During his time at Oklahoma, he spent the season on the scout team, but didn't play a single snap for the Sooners before declaring. Although it had been some time since he appeared in the game, Green Beckham was selected with the 40th overall pick in the second round by the Tennessee Titans. He had a decent rookie season, as he played in all 16 games with 32 catches for 550 receiving yards and 4 touchdowns. In August of 2016, he was traded to the Philadelphia Eagles. During the 2016 season, he appeared in 15 games, having 36 catches for 400 yards and 2 touchdowns. But then, in June of 2017, he was waived by the Eagles, and that would be the end of his NFL career. In December of 2018, he was arrested on possession of controlled substance and resisting arrest. Well, that wraps up this top 10 list. Which name were you surprised to see on this list? Drop a comment down below and share with me your thoughts. If you haven't done so yet, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Also, make sure to go vote for the 5th Annual Harris Highlights Award Show. You guys can vote as often as you'd like, until Tuesday. The award show is going to be this Tuesday night at 8pm Eastern, live on my channel.